This video demonstrates UMA, the User Managed Access Web Protocol based on OAuth. It shows how you, as an online personal cloud service provider, can use UMA's privacy by design features to protect your users' resources and put easy control of online data sharing into their hands. First, we'll show how a person named Alice shares selected data from her personal cloud app with a job board website to help her submit applications for job postings. We call this type of permission data sharing Alice to Alice sharing because she's the sole user of all the apps in question. Smart PDS is her personal data store on the web. Uma refers to an app holding Alice's personal data as a resource server. She may have many resource servers specializing in photos, health data, social networking, credit scores, or whatever. Smart AM is a web app she uses as a personal data sharing hub. Here, she centrally manages and monitors data sharing, even as the distributed resources change and morph. Uma calls this kind of hub an authorization server. We anticipate some personal cloud services will offer an app that combines an authorization hub with some personal data storage. CareerMonster is an example of an app Uma calls a client. Alice is going to use it to request access to her own data so she can complete some job applications. Clients can be mobile apps as well as web apps. Note that UMA uses the same names for software entities as OAuth does. Meet Alice. Here's her webmail inbox. When Alice visits the Smart PDS site, she can check, correct, and enhance her personal data profile there. For example, editing the record of her middle name. Here we'll just add a middle name. She's also storing some data about her schooling, including a record of the classes she's taken and the grades that she got. Uma still enables a central data sharing hub, even if Alice is managing resources in a hundred different web locations. For example, one of her other resource servers might live at her university. It shares out her e-transcript as long as she gives permission. University transcripts are an example of data that has to be asserted by a trustworthy third party. Alice knows ahead of time that she'll be using CareerMonster to apply for jobs, so she can pre-authorize its access to her personal profile by adding that app to her sharing rules for her full name and giving it read-only access. Note that the pop-up window that just showed for adding the app is run by Smart AM, not Smart PDS. The resource server is outsourcing protection to the authorization server. If Alice ever wants to see what apps have been given access to what data coming from any resource server, she can do that in the full Smart AM interface. Here we can see that her sharing policy includes whitelisting CareerMonster when she herself is using that app. By the way, she doesn't experience this as any kind of heavyweight policy configuration. She's just setting some preferences. She can see permissions, hide them, and even remove permissions at this point. Now it's time for Alice to hunt for jobs, so she visits CareerMonster. She likes the look of this job, Senior Software Engineer, so she decides to apply. The CareerMonster app knows how to pick up user profile information by working with the API exposed by personal data stores. Because Alice already said, it's okay for the app to retrieve her full name as long as she's the only one using the app. It can retrieve her name automatically. Of course, it's not all that hard to simply type her name into a web app instead, but if her name changes later, everything can be kept in sync automatically. And if she were visiting CareerMonster from a mobile phone, it would be more convenient to share data automatically than to type it. Because Alice hasn't said it's okay to share her record of classes yet with CareerMonster versus her name, 
she's put through an approval flow at Smart AM that's similar to ordinary OAuth. Once she approves this retrieval, Smart AM stores her new policy preference, and she can look at and modify this setting later if she likes. Not that the list of her classes and grades is likely to change somewhat often, and so it's especially valuable to set up the ability to share a feed of that information rather than a copy that goes stale. All of these sharing-related interactions are stored at Smart AM for Alice to look at. This log could be presented in a number of ways, such as an interactive dashboard, or it could be exported. We just saw how Alice can centrally manage, control, and monitor sharing of all kinds of data with applications that she herself uses. This feels much like OAuth, but has the advantage of letting her set up sharing preferences from a single place and even reuse them across different resource servers as she wishes. Reusing her policies for various data sources becomes especially important if Alice wants to share data with other people and organizations in her life. For example, family members, doctors, and tax accountants. This is something ordinary OAuth and OpenID Connect don't do. And most apps, such as for calendar and photo sharing, do a terrible job of letting users control and enable sharing. Now let's show what it might look like for Alice to share data with Bob, the hiring manager. Unsurprisingly, we call this Alice to Bob. Meet Bob. Here's his webmail inbox. He's received an email notification that someone has applied for a job he posted on Career Monster. He takes a look at who put in a job application. It turns out to be Alice. He realizes she didn't supply phone information, which he needs, so he tries to import the needed data himself. Now, Career Monster has been refused access behind the scenes because Smart AM blocks access unless it's got a sharing preference on file that says it's okay to share. So Career Monster redirects Bob over to Smart AM to ensure he knows he's now getting involved in an access request that may require him to provide claims about himself to Smart AM. Career Monster shows he's requested access. Returning to Alice now, she notices that she's gotten an email. Smart AM has generated an email notification that says that Bob tried to access her phone number. Alice doesn't have to grant access, but she decides to grant Bob access when he's accessing through Career Monster. Looking at Smart AM's full interface, Alice can see evidence that Bob requested access, that she granted it, and that her current settings allow this access. She can revoke or modify this access anytime she likes from the panel that shows that she's shared this data. We just saw how Alice can centrally and proactively manage, control, and monitor sharing of all kinds of personal data with others. This feels much like the way we share calendars and photo album feeds with others now, except that instead of using so-called private or unlisted URLs, the security mechanism has OAuth level strength. Alice can also set criteria for access that require Bob and others to supply claims about themselves, even non-uniquely identifying claims such as this person is a citizen of the UK. Uma has profiled OpenID Connect as one way to gather these claims in order to drive policy decisions on. We want to thank Kentara and the members of the UMA workgroup, along with Cloud Identity Limited for creating the UMA-enabled sample apps, and Daza Greenwood for video production. UMA has a growing number of independent implementations, including open source, and we're conducting interop activities. We hope you'll visit the UMA wiki to read the specs and case studies, and consider joining the group as a participant. It's free. We invite you to engage with us on Twitter and Facebook as well. Thanks for your attention.